uh, I want to say it was black and yellow just picked this up actually against simply two based as a five position faces void. And it failed miserably enough. It was not good. It did not work out. Ten were called to battle. Mm. It was, uh, Surprisingly. Was it game three? Yeah. Or game one? Uh, game, three? Was... game three, I think. I saw... Yeah, it was game three. Right. I saw game two of that series. Yeah, no, I saw uh, game one as uh, somebody was talking about Envy on Twitter. You're super farmed on Luna. How do you lose this game? Ten I'm saying it's Envy. Anything can happen. No game is uh, unwinnable. No game is unlosable. Yeah. But, Absolutely. Uh, kind of there. But uh, I'm excited to see Faces Void picked up here. It's a hero that we don't see all that often. So we've got some interesting stuff this game. Yeah. Uh, Magnus, uh, we haven't seen that much of Faces Void. Not as good as an anti mage pick would have been here, but uh, very heads up by Wind and Rain grabbing that as a deny pick here. I think it's really smart. I think it was a good call by you. I think this is definitely like one of those heroes where if, if they actually got this on the side of uh, D2 Hustlers the percentage chance to win on wind and range just plummets yeah all right so uh one more time for the viewers at home before uh, we start this game ricky uh again d2 hustlers uh 1437 is currently casting uh oga dota pit south america so he can't be here with this team it's going to be frogos uh, replacing him on roll four for anybody just tuning in now Mm -hmm. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Both these teams did come in from the uh, re recent open qualifiers, so they are brand new to the DPC altogether. Um, yeah, well, no, kind of. Wind and Rain is kind of a team. <laughs> it, yeah, it's uh, Wind and Rain is complicated. Let's just say that. If you guys want to find that one out, you know, Google is your best friend. Take a look at uh, that one. <laughs> That is uh, not easy to explain. I think it'll probably take the entire duration of this game. I did draw a fantastic flow chart about this, actually. I'm not sure you if you like remember that. You a crazy that. person while drawing. Oh, wait, no, I was there. Yeah, you were there. You I drew. look like crazy people. Yeah, I drew a fantastic flow chart for this one. It's floating around on the internet somewhere, but uh, it does fully explain the, the shuffle that happened to make this Wind and Rain roster. Fully explain it. Uh, you missed D&M on it, though. Didn't you? I missed DNM. That was correct. Yeah. So that that was an oof. Uh, he got transferred to uh, five man Midas in you know, the lower division. Yes. Yeah. Wouldn't want to get my NA lore wrong. It'd be very awkward. Yeah. yeah. NA lore is the most important. Let's be real. Are you okay? Casting the game. It looks like they're having some internet issues right now. Devi Lama, or maybe he's stalling for a little bit of time. Little column A, little column B. <laughs> Wait, not uh, quite ready to, to start the game. I mean, Does give us a chance to look at hats. Is uh, your self claimed oh. hat master? Love to see it. Uh, no RGB lion in this one. Oh, we kind of have RGB lion. Very nice. Well played by Frugos. Our camera's up. Is it having me to scooch closer to my computer? Was it? Is our cam our camera still up? Is it having me to scooch closer to my computer right now? No, no one, no one can see enough. You're good to do whatever you want. Right, nice. I can see you already took your jacket off and uh, rocking a tank top. Yeah, you know me. Uh, it's vacation uh, all nap business time. when I'm on camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. The the immortal mace, the mace of aeons, eons, on Yuma. This thing is super cool. Very expensive. Is it? Which one's the? Super, it's the time breaker is a super expensive one, right? Not anymore. No, the Mace of Eons is the most expensive by a landslide. Why? What? Come out? Uh, this was like a uh, ultra rare, I believe, in a chest. Okay. Um, because the uh, the time breaker was the one that it got deleted uh, it like, from the game. Yeah. Yeah. So they replaced it with uh, another one. It was a copy of a weapon from an MMO that only was around for like two years, if I'm not mistaken. It was like they literally copied the entire the cosmetic like exactly and then that company found out and then Valve had to remove it from the game or at least remove it from the store. Would they be able to add it again to the game? No, I don't if believe so. <laughs> I mean, they didn't own the rights to it. I don't know if the assets were released, maybe. But uh, yeah, that was an interesting one for sure. Can't remember what the name of the MMO was. It's really it was it was actually kind of neat, but uh, 
Who cares? Because it's not Dota, Neff. And Dota is the only thing that really matters, specifically the North American DPC, where we're finally kicking off our, our uh, adventure here. Um, the strongest region, maybe after China. It's maybe after China. It's, it's still up in the air. It's time yeah. now for the final fight. We're going to see Sword mid lane on this Le Shrek. I'm just kidding. He's going off lane at Zabo mid. Yep. Uh, sword position three. Zabo uh, on the Ember Spirit here. Um, looks like everyone is still uh, going their bottles. Very important with the water rune changes. Uh, there was a weird glitch for a little while where if you had a full bottle and you picked up a water rune, you would just lose a bottle charge. They fixed that one. What do you mean there was a glitch? That was just... That's intended. intended. Yeah, and so it, as it is meant to be played. What? No, course. you're only supposed to get two bottle charges from water runes and bounty runes. No, but if you picked up with a full bottle... Oh! Go down to two oh! Charges. All right, well, that... They, yeah, that that's one just... Fixed. I'm sure that one was also intended. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, bottom lane, it is uh, a dual lane. Uh, they did go ahead and TP the Tusk up top, so why, why, why here? Struggling to fight up against Divai Llama and Frugo is going to be forced to salve early on, but it is giving Anti Mage some free space in the lane here to pick up some CS, which is really important for him. He's going to have his work cut out for him this game. He's uh, okay against Faces Boy. He can come online and find the farm a little bit faster than the hero. He moves around the map very quickly with Blink. Uh, my concern is like if this goes into the ultra late game, you're playing against an RP, you're playing against a uh, Chronosphere. I think uh, D2 Hustlers will eventually win. You're looking for that sweet spot of like 28 to 35 minutes to end the game on Anti Mage with you. Ooh. So it's important for him to, to find his farm very quickly in this lane. Yeah, absolutely. The other the other issue you have is you have that uh, empower to really amp um, this face avoids farm speed, right? Like he typically will be a little slower to that like battle fury or a maelstrom depending on which one he goes for this game it's most likely going to be the battle fury but uh with a magnus makes it quite a bit easier yeah, do you see uh frogos's tag by the way down in the bottom lane mercenary.frogos <laughs> very powerful yeah Pretty nice. It, it is very difficult, right? You typically want to use Earth Spike to just like harass with, and you don't have that ability against an anti mage as long as counter spells off cooldown. It's so easy to predict. Top lane, Pandego. This might be first blood going away. Steal Borko. One more auto attack grabs it. Sword, however, snowball for the moment, saving him. Can Yuma chase him down? No, Borko with great body blocks will keep Sword alive. Very nice. Well, it's, uh, first blood going the way of Wind and Rain. Gonna help him quite a bit. He's sitting pretty low on mana right now, so he's not able to accomplish a whole lot of zoning of this face's void, which uh, needs to change. He's got. What's he got? Is it an empty. Huh? Oh, is his anti mage's courier heading out to the top line for some reason? It looks like he's planning on rotating. Oh no, he's going for the secret shot for that one. He's gonna hit level four and he's gonna fly over there. My bad. Oh, Frogos. He's fine. Divai Llama, no mana and uh, no power or no levels into that skewer. I'm pretty sure in the offlane you want to go like for the shockwave max, but Anti Mage can just fight you now. Like you have no mana to contest this hero, and Grimstroke is such an issue with this ink swell. Um, I really like this lane duo. Uh, it, they're struggling against it. You'd normally be able to, to spam your skills, uh, harass the enemy out of lane, or uh, cleave them down, but uh, anti mate just not allowing that. And he's like that against a, a couple of off laners who'd normally be able to, to trade with the lane opponents pretty well. Um, things like uh, what? Bristleback, uh, 500, not so much. Mars, anti mate does decent with the uh, against as well. Just anybody who needs their mana to uh, dominate the lane. And some heroes you lose a super hard to, like a slide eye or like um, Legion Commander, and they can kill with much of a bot uh, mid lane, actually. Yeah, I was just uh, watching this. Four heroes in the mid lane here fighting for the water runes. Frugos will take top. What a great split. Oh, Snowball in. He just needs to deny it. Really well played by him. You want to make sure that Sabo does not get that bottle refill as he just dances himself away. And he gives that bottom rune over to Papa Tutti. This was really sick. This is a great rotation. Mm hmm. Opportunity uh, needed recovery as well. A little bit behind now, uh, things are a bit more even. Just hitting level five. He goes back to the bounty rune on uh, the Ember Spirit. That one only giving two charges now as well. 
two of them even. I'm curious to what the six minute rune is going to be because that's the big one. Uh, the meta of the mid lane is a little bit different in the way that if you manage to pick up a strong four minute uh, power rune like a DD on Void Spirit, you just instantly get a kill. Now it's uh, not as one type bottom lane, Divide Llama. Ooh, nice sidestep. He'll be fine. I was close. I mean, he did use the fairy fire just to kind of jog, uh, juke that out. You just, it's actually so funny watching five minutes happen because both of the supports instinctively saw nighttime and like clicked for rune and was like, oh, wait. <laughs> 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 like Frugos and YYY both immediately clicked back to go to like the dire triangle there. And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's, it's uh, definitely nothing that happens at five minutes anymore. We've yeah. been conditioned, Neff, and then our overlords change it on us. Yeah, it's gonna take us a while to forget these uh, these instincts. It's the pre five minutes about to turn to nighttime. You want to rotate at the same time for your catapults uh, as they spawn when you're going for bounty runs. Now it's not really the same. Your objectives are all over the place on the clock. Yeah, there's stuff the happening the all the time. time. Two, three, four, six. Yeah. So night. You also have to choose between bounty runes at six minutes and uh, trying to secure power runes at six minutes. Yeah. It's not fun. And they're going to go ahead and fight for the rune bottom. Nice remnant, but it ends up being top. It's a regen rune. Zabo would love to get this, and Steel Borko is here to make sure that he does. There's no chance. And that's this is the thing. These, these power runes make a world of difference. And as you can see... Um, as both supports rotate again to the mid lane to secure them. Top lane, though, some fighting coming out. Sword, it's maledicted. Looks like uh, he's going to be fine, though. Yeah, he can't be uh, quite as aggressive because they're not able to dive the tower or anything here. Only he'd be able to with the maledict, slowing that one down. Uh, region rune would have felt really good on Papatuti. His mana's pretty high right now anyway. Bottom lane, why, why, why? Getting some stun off. Yeah, they get a huge mana void as well. A ton of damage comes in. Anti Mage, no blink for six seconds. Papa Tutti pops that wand. Is gonna be able to take down the Anti Mage. A fantastic rotation, netting them a kill on uh, easily the most farmed hero in the game right now. Dago. He's in trouble. No mana left. Uh, they will be uh, catching a rotation in from Zabo though. I mean. This is a similar, I, this is basically an identical rotation for both teams, but uh, Wind and Rain lose the Anti-Mage, whereas D2 Hustlers only lose the Witch Doctor. The problem's your tower, though. Yeah, yeah, you lose the top tower on top of that. You got three points here under the Diabolic Edict. Uh, Sword manages to snag that one in no time at all. Now working on his Arcane Boots. So a little bit more map controlled now. Uh, it's never good when you lose that one this early. Against the left track, it feels inevitable. The mid one, you want to, you know, put the extra resources there to defend. They don't have amazing ways of uh, clearing out waves, unfortunately. You two hustlers. Uh, uh, I, I imagine this just all comes down to how aggressive this void spirit's able to play. How much, uh, how many pickoffs can he find, or damn, can do the enemies before they reach his tower here? We'll see uh, what happens close to this 10-minute mark in the second catapult. Watch sword pretty closely because a lot of plays are going to happen around him right now. Yeah. With uh, Ember Spirit setting them up. One of the issues you have, too, is it's actually not a great game for. Oh, we'll come Speaking back to that in a moment. Mid lane. Nice setup. They do chain stun a little bit there. The coconut doesn't actually connect. Bottom lane, there is a haste rune. Uh, Faces Void ends up dying top, though. I didn't take my own advice. I wasn't watching this left track. <laughs> yeah, Papa Tutti. He's just going to dive in mid lane, uses the dissimilate to dodge out that ink swell. Frugos is going to find it with that uh, impale. Or Earth Spike, rather, but... I mean, you see six heroes in the mid lane, you're like, this is where the action is, but no, it's it's still a Shrek top. He got level six, he kills the Faces Void. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. It's important... Oh, a Faded Brooch picked up here by the Void Spirit. That's a nice find. They can put that on basically anybody, and they'll be happy to carry it until probably tier three neutral items. So it really needs to finish these Arcane Boots as he's struggling to have enough mana to continue spamming out his skills after clearing out uh, an enemy hero. But I imagine they plan on playing this uh, left track a little bit slower into the 10 minute mark. Once catapult spot, he might rotate to mid and try to take that tower, you know, limit the amount of uh, space they have to take advantage of here with the Magnus and the Faceless Void. They do have uh, the, he is just maxing the Empower, right? So it is three points in the Empower. Unfortunately for him, there are no stack. I just moved the camera to where the old camp was. It is not there. Professional caster, by the way. Uh, in the jungle, they do get the chrono, drop it right on top of the Lesh Rack. There is going to be an Earth Spike to follow. Yuma taking so much damn damage. RP committed as well. They need this kill. They've committed everything, and they will finally get it. A couple more auto attacks. Sword not going down without a fight, even though he didn't really do anything but stand there, Dev. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's all you really have to do. 
right. They managed to find themselves a uh, trusty shovel, but he digs up a cobalt rather than a healing salve. It would be very nice to pop one of the faces for you as he TP'd down to the bottom lane. No avail, though. 10 minute runes coming up here. Uh, Papa Tootie gearing up for top, but two heroes rotating in makes it difficult. Ooh. He does have a rune scouting bottom, and this time Papa Tootie gets the regen. This is great. Helps him either Look farm or rotate with this. This will be huge. Yeah. The, the happiest void spirit in the world. Passes that uh, keen optic the way of Lion. He's the happiest Lion in the world now. That cast range from mana region always goes very far. And a tome. Finger of death on Lion. The cast range, absolutely massive. Which, by the way, I'm not sure if you've uh, been watching Frugos at all, but he has been playing pretty much Lion exclusively uh, in these tournaments. So this is going to be a pretty sick lion game i'm pretty I'm, if i if i had to guess steel borko here in the jungle trying to get away frugos and friends here i'm assuming he just goes for the finger of death no he's actually just gonna make sure papatutis can secure the kill himself not the greedy support getting uh that finger of death stack oh well it's a pretty long cooldown so it's 600 damage so you think all right well if i go for this finger of death kill sure i get myself a stack as early as possible but i might not be able to secure a kill uh, later down the line so Frugo showing discipline, restraint. I mean, the big thing is he can kill Lestrak with this, right? Lestrak did go double bracer, so he has 1,200 health, but this oh, lion no, 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 still chews really... through it. Uh, double bracer is the small brain play. You go for double fluffy hat now. Ah, the, uh, yes, of course. Players do. It's what, five strength is to 100 health each as opposed to fluffy hats, 125. Holy crap. That item's pretty for, good. Uh, lower price as well. Yeah. Why, why, why? Cut out here in the jungle. Easy pick off from them. Pandago grabs it, gets his level six death ward now online. So this top lane is actually a death trap now. Both these supports have kill potential on this Lashrak, so he can't play as greedy as he did before. So Lashrak, he, he's playing further back because he was hiding the trees earlier. Now he's uh, farming up these creep camps. Once the lion disappears, he'll feel a little bit safer. Oh, what a sick play by Divine Lama. He might die for this. No, he's actually fine. It'll be okay. Oh, can they actually get the kill here on Zabo? <laughs> Yuma, pump fake in that chrono, wants to do it top lane. Those we talked about, sword. He goes down. He can't play like this in the lane. Yeah, they, these two supports dropped very low. It was close. Uh, I imagine a fluffy hat would have done it there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Lashrak, you may got some uh, nice bracers, but you know, you gotta keep your head hey, nice and warm cool. this type of year. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of extra gold you save from that one. It might be important to grab yourself um, ma uh, magic resistance in a game like this one as well. Yeah, he has to get a casual cloak for sure. Uh, yeah, he picks it up. There it is. Ah, nice. And right yeah, into Maggie. the Eternal Shroud. Uh, top lane, Pandago, probably dead here. I, I mean, unless there's some god tier jukes, which uh, I don't even know if that would be possible. Oh, he goes for it. <laughs> Uh, it's, you know, at the end of the day, not the worst thing that can happen. They are showing two cores in the top half now, though. Yeah. No, I'm a little bit uh, surprised. I wanted to see some anti-mage play. They might go for sword. New patch. Oh. They jump down. They drop out that time dilation. The chrono comes in as well. There is going to be Divai Llama here to follow this up with an RP if they even need the skewer. He just dies again. This is two deaths back to back for sword in this same lane. They were a little bit late on that uh, Chronosphere there. If he could pop that before the Diabolic Geek and the Pulse Nova, which I think he had an opportunity to, but I don't think they would have had to expend the RP there. But that's just two very big cooldowns uh, for grabbing yeah. that Leshrac. I think he was I hoping for the Bash. Isn't... Yeah. Sword isn't too unhappy about that one, I imagine. So it's a lot easier to fight into the enemy team now, and we're probably going to see some more aggression once this Leshrac is back up. Perhaps even going for this mid-tier one we are talking about earlier. I haven't had the chance to just yet. Fighting coming out for the runes. Bottom lane, they catch a support. YYY goes down, channeling that Death Lord. Pandago finds it, and he's just going to get uh, burned down here, I believe. Zabo going in deep, though. No mana left. Does have an Invis rune bottled, and Papatuti will just go and clean up the sentry and back on out top lane. Anti-Mage, the Battle Fury completed. Frugos? Yeah, not much you can do there. <laughs> oh, he has Diffusal on Yuma. I love this. It was buffed a little bit. They increased the agility on it. They increased the end, which doesn't matter too much to the phase of board, but uh, they also increased the... Uh... 
Oh my. Yeah, oh, oh, oh my indeed. Right <laughs> mid lane. Uh, this was actually a really nice setup here in the mid lane. A, a two man slight change into a snowball and split earth. Um, Magnus was the one that actually talked about the snowball, but he uh, skewered away and the snowball still just ran over his boy. Um, and that's going to be your mid one or your mid lane tier one tower. No way to survive. And yeah, a 3k so. gold lead for war. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, the issue with expanding those abilities, right? Suddenly your towers become uh, so much easier to take. Uh, catapults uh, spawning now and ultimates coming back up in the next couple of, well, 20 seconds here. I imagine that's sort of when they're ready to take a fight here on uh, D2 Hustlers. So they could be thinking about mounting a push of their own, but it looks like they're playing a little bit safer inside their jungle. And not really one play into the uh, winning rate here just yet. Maybe waiting for this Chronosphere to come back up. Very long cooldown on 160 seconds at all levels, which is part of the reason why Faces Void has fallen off. Uh, Chrono is just like such a crazy good ability, but so essential to him uh, doing anything. Yeah, you pretty much play around your Chrono timing. Oh, bottom lane. Snowball really deep. He actually misses the Maledict, drops the Death Ward anyway. Frugos and Pandego will take down Steel here. Um, no real way to survive that at all. That is a, yeah. that's a really deep dive for a support. Yeah, I don't know about that one. Uh... Oh no, Magnus just missed an imp, uh, an RP there. A two-man soul bind will hold them in place, preventing Papatuti from getting away for a moment. But Divine Llama going down. That was actually so weird because he skewered Lashrak into the Grimstroke, but because he was hit by an, uh, a uh, an Aether Remnant, you can't skewer them out of Aether Remnant. You can't, yeah. you can't use anything to pull people out of Aether Remnant. Wait, you can force staff them and whatnot, but uh, if the Aether Remnant will uh, interrupt force movement the moment they connect with it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, as soon as you use any other... No, 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 he was, he was Aether Remnant first, got skewered, and he just went right through him. Wait, what? Yeah. Interesting. Uh, I know you can force staff a, a Bagnus who's skewering, and he'll go right through the target instead of connecting the skewer and whatnot. Oh, that's kind of funny. That's, uh, I, I missed the, the start of that kill, though, so I didn't why, see why, that Why one. top lane? Get scouted. They're actually looking for the anti-mage. They're not going to find him. A nice t uh, gank, uh, you know, get down Mr. President from YYY here. We'll see how uh, things go from here. 5k network advantage is only managing to find pickoffs on uh, these supports. Ember hasn't gone down yet. Uh, Sabo had a pretty nice game. He got to 8.8k net worth uh, compared to Void Spirit's uh, 6.1. Papa Tutti really needs his BKB, really needs this uh, Egg in him Scepter eventually. If he can get onto the back line to silencing people, be able to find kills make the game a little bit easier but right now it looks like they're approaching this like ideal anti-mage game timing of like the, the 28 to 35 minute mark six slot yeah i mean he is incredibly farmed 10,000 net worth here 18 minutes into the game and i mean it will require a pretty big gank to find them and they just they can't do it every time they try and make these rotations it's just not happening and anti-mage gets out yeah. yeah they could initiate with the chronosphere with the, a blink of line but they don't have uh Faces Void is not really able to jump that far forward yet. Lion still pretty far away away from his Blink Dagger. Needs another 500 gold in his tank. They're and going in. Might. Can they find the kill, though? He actually gets pulled in with the Snowball. And as a result, oh, man, they are just able to dodge this out completely. It's just going to be Steel Borko, the only survivor with three heroes rotating on in. Nice two-man chain sword. Going to follow it up. Split Earth off the mark. Divai Lama, no skewer for a few seconds. Will drop the RP. In comes Yuma. Can they turn this around? A three-man Chrono holding them in place. The Death Ward comes out as well. A huge two-man Soulbind Antimage debating on going in, but you've lost three. And all heroes on uh, D2 Hustlers stay alive. A very nice turnaround there. That uh, mech wand there on the main is keeping him alive long enough to set that RP. I love how he picked it up, uh, picked it out a couple of times, forcing that uh, Ember Spirit to, to waste his Valley to Fist or waste walking back, buying himself a little bit more time there. Anti-Mage almost made that play work and forced out that Chronosphere. He got close enough to his teammates to force the coconut onto him and then walked out of range so it wouldn't continue to bat, uh, bounce off of them, but it wasn't enough to keep him alive under that huge wombo combo of D2 Hustlers. Absolutely. Well played by uh, both teams, but uh, much needed uh, some breathing room there. I managed to grab that mid tower, so suddenly things feel a little bit safer for the faceless void, and they finally have some breathing room on the map, space to work with here. 
Yeah. It does give them a lot of gold back uh, their way too. It was almost a 6k gold lead for Wind and Rain uh, prior to that fight. Yuma now about to finish a Manta. The anti mages we know, just finished his uh, as that fight concluded. So they're pretty close on net worth. I mean, yeah, there's a, a slight difference here, but... As far as, you know, effectiveness and damage, uh, Chronosphere definitely will trump anything that the Anti-Mage is going to drop on them. So they just got to play around that cooldown now. And they go right into Roshan as a result. Well, they tried to, at least. But, uh, Papa Judy being very annoying. <laughs> he loved to see it. Um, he stalled him out. It is a fairly quick Rosh. I mean, you got Tag Team, Medallion, Edict. It doesn't look like D2 Hustlers are concerned with this in any way. I don't think they can do anything about this. I oh, don't like up. this. Uh, oh, no. It's not going to come out fast enough. If they could have stalled him a little bit longer, they would have been able to come in tonight as Roche, but they're completing it too quickly. It's taking them too long, and there it is. Roche taken. YYY does go down to pop 2D, but they're more than happy to give up uh, YYY for that kill there. Position 5 for Aegis. Steel Borko is kind of low and gets found by Pandago. Death Ward comes out. They're going to be able to finish off the kill. It's Snowball to try and buy him a little bit of time. But Yuma, thus, if they kill Sword, this would be massive. The Hex comes out. They've got the Finger of Death. They get a nice impale onto the backside, catching Ember Spirit. Frugos just commits it, finds the kill. Zabo now. Yules comes out. Can he get out? He does have RP available. They drop it onto Vilama. Can they get the Ember Spirit? He's falling critical. The Earth Spike off the mark. Zabo trying to run away, but the Skewer out to finish the kill. Reincarnation, but a Rem gonna make this so difficult and now there is no chance of this fight swinging back for a war chrono now off cooldown what a chase uh, imagine you catch all those here at the tail end of the fight it went from not a good fight at all to pretty nice for d2 hustlers i mean i, I thought that they'd get uh yyy and that would be it everyone else would uh, get out but uh, they stuck around a little bit too long a couple of these heroes i think Amber here probably could have gotten out of that one it'd be really uh Hustled. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> he didn't uh, put his he didn't put his uh, sneakers on today, you know. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, no sneakers today. But still, anti mage uh, managed to get out of that one. He's looking uh, very farmed as well, working on this battle fury, abyssal blade. Uh, after that one, not as strong as it was before. You don't have that blink mechanic tied into it, but still. Uh, this is what anti mage doesn't suffer from that as much as a lot of other heroes do because a lot of time you're blinking on top of somebody uh, Then using the abyssal on them pretty fast after that. So yeah This will feels pretty similar to am Frugos did reveal the blink dagger from him in that fight, which uh, he used incredibly well a couple missed earth spikes still But he got the big kills the hex onto the the Lashrak. He got a great earth spike onto the ember spirit uh, to help claim his first life there before the reincarnation and um now you have a uh, shard actually completed on the faceless void so the reverse time walk which if i'm not mistaken does have did they put on a separate hotkey or does it have like a did they put something to prevent you from double casting i can't remember which one it was oh that is a kill onto ember in the mid lane uh it's a separate hotkey now you can see on him it's reverse time walk on the other one Steel Borko, comp by the Maledict, comp by the rest of the team. Walrus punched by some time, but goes the way of Frugos. Steel Borko taking that. Yeah, his, uh, what, one, two, three, fourth skill is now first time. Yeah, okay, so they put on a new skill. They got. That made sense. So you can use it for a fraction of a second afterwards, but a lot of the time people were like misclicking it as they were jumping forward, which, uh, wasn't good, so this does make it a little bit better. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Frugos just draining all of Anti Mage's mana here in the top lane, so he's definitely salty about that. He's just, he's just harassing. Him. I mean, wait a minute, you have Chrono. Could they go for this? Remnant comes out. Frugos setting up potentially a huge fight there. Anti Mage has out of mana. They don't have to commit anything. Snowball. On the backside, Yuma drops a zoning Chrono. No. <laughs> Anti Mage happens to walk back into it, but. Uh, this might end up going pretty bad. Never mind. There is an RP, a two man Earth Spike. Yuma sitting nice and healthy. The BKB comes out from Zabo. Okay. A lot of damage. That Inkswell doing some serious work. Pandago falling low as well. Three heroes now dead for the side of D2 Hustlers. Um, is that Shard? No, it wasn't even the Shard. Well, I should turn that one around uh, in the end there. Just went on that anti too hard. Used too many cooldowns. Couldn't do anything after that one. 
I feel like Yuma uh, kind of misplayed this fight in a few different areas. Like he yeah, he held the Chrono and then was like, uh, maybe I'll use Chrono and then hits no one. And then after that, your whole team just gets collapsed on by the track because you're just stuck inside of like this one little area. The zoning Chrono was definitely some interesting tech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I, I'm not, I'm not debating <laughs> that one. Yeah. Uh, again, didn't mention uh, to Kanti with anyone. If you uh, focused more so on the Ember Spirit, there it would have been uh, a lot better. <laughs> I feel like that's his target. After the Anti Mage loses all of his mana, you're not really concerned about anything other than uh, the Ember Spirit. Or even getting a Leshrac and getting on top of him, blowing him up as quickly as possible is important. But now it feels like they're gonna have some damage issues in these next couple of fights. Yeah. Working on this BKB on Yuma, and that's not gonna solve that. It'll keep you alive and allow you to play very aggressive and far forward, but. It's not going to solve the damage problems. Uh, a nice find potentially here in the bottom lane. Why, why, why? Trying to uh, just duke this out. Time dilation doing some work. In comes the Lotus Orb though. Yuma, gotta be careful. Pops that Manta. Gets caught by the split earth. There's gonna be a good skewer to give him some space with the BKB from Zabo and the Mana Void from the Anti Mage. Just definitely way too much damage for him to deal with. Finger of Death as well as the Death Ward takes down that Lashrak. But you are running low on numbers here. Time to just disengage. Papa Tutti will ask will step himself out, but you lose the face's void now. What? What do you do, Neff? Uh, from here, uh, you stall. He, I mean, this is uh, Anti Mage beginning to hit critical mass. He'll have this uh, this butterfly. I'm sorry. He'll have um, the Abyssal Blade. I imagine he'll build the butterfly not long after that. Uh, you're going to need uh, faces void finishing up his MKB and. That's not going to happen until I think after uh, anti mage will be done like his butterfly plus one item. Um, they're not really taking advantage of this Magnus and power and faces void farming as much as they could. Uh, at this point, they should be keeping up pretty well with the anti mage and farm, but they're not. They're taking these pretty bad fights. Uh, they're not playing around their their cooldowns well enough. They seem to take several of these engagements just before they have their abilities up. Like uh, the one fight into Roshan, for example, I still had another like. 15 20 seconds till rp uh and like 50 or 40 seconds until chronosphere uh they managed to win that fight anyways but they just seem slightly off with some of their timing with some of their rotations they can be reacting to some of the things wind and rain are doing rather than uh timing their own plays there's gonna be an axe pickup on the void spirit after his bkb which is just always such a strong item um, getting that AoE silence, obviously Zabo with his BKB now going for an Aeon Disc should be fairly protected. Um, the main thing is it, it will slow down these supports um, from getting off, you know, their spells. Divai Llama will be able to catch Steel Borko here, send him all the way back to his team, get themselves a quick pick off. Yeah. Borko set back. He's not going to be able to get anything off. Bottom line, they're going to take the Magnus down here just to use this Empower on Yuma, it seems. So they're playing this uh, a little bit smarter, finally. He's mine. Yeah, I like this decision, giving him the Empower and just getting him to this battle, or this uh, BKB as fast as possible. He does need it. He definitely does need it. Um, the Manta style. Oh. Mid lane, Lashrak gets found. The Hex, all the Chainstun is there. They drop the Death Ward. Sword caught out in the middle of nowhere. No Yuma potentially going down bottom lane. Oh, nice. Manta style, good slide chains out in time. He's just going to drop a chrono, but the Glimmer Cape giving him some extra magic resist there. Pandago rotating on in. The BKB comes out. Can he get the chain bashes? Reverse time walk. Nice little uh, sidestep there on the backside. The coconut, baby. Welcome to... <laughs> Oh my goodness, so much damage out. Ember Spirit able to uh, get out of this fight, but uh, not going to be the case here for Steel Borko as he just dies uh, right after respawning. I managed to turn that on the uh, two supports there. Still, they saved the Ember Spirit. That was the major goal. Did have to give it one of the charges of his, uh, well, I think that was his last seven second charge of his BKB there. So now he's down to six. Uh, phases Void. I think he might have been able to get the kill off on the Ember Spirit if he was just a little bit closer, use the uh, Chronosphere Fraction of a second sooner. He was out of range to oh. auto-attack. Uh, Hex, anti-mage, in trouble again. The Mana Drain's coming in. 
You got no mana, Anti-Mage. And this is going to be uh, potentially an easy kill onto him. The Slide of Fist doesn't actually, uh, or the change doesn't land on the face of Void. Frugos on the backside caught by the Ember. There's going to be Aeon just protecting him. But Frugos, he's still surviving this. Somehow finally ends up going down. But Pop 2D on the backside finding Sword. Zabo just getting shredded here. Faceless Void. He's got to get out. The Time Walk will keep him alive. But Pop 2D with the BKB trying to finish off this kill. He has one Astral Step he left. Will use it. Zabo pops. Another big win here for the side of D2 Hustlers. And they might not be done. The... Divai Lama is looking for sword. Oh, he doesn't have any mana left. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, no. <laughs> you know, this is what we're all about here. This, it, There's nothing like uh, nothing like this. No other regions have these types of plays. It was a bait set up here completely by Divai Lama. Looking for him on the backside. Papa Tutti comes back in, finds sword. A lot of damage comes in. There's going to be the Maledict catching him. And Sword's dead. Divai Lama. He's just too dang smart. Setting this one up from the beginning. Steel Did you Barco. expect anything other than a 200 IQ play out of a North American player? He Absolutely takes out not. two of them with his setup by sitting on top of the hill. The amazing cliff technique here by Divai Lama. Take he, notes, everybody. He learned what from the best. Is. Yeah. This is a uh, North American home region tech. Yeah. You don't get this type of... Uh, gameplay anywhere else Papa Tutti at the rune gonna be protected here by a Yules has to simulate and everything just to, to try and dodge this out so that's just gonna turn on to YYY and he does drop the soul bind but another kill for D2 hustlers they are just moving around the map so fast enough and losing that uh the last every time the sword goes down they lose uh, a lot of their ability to shut off these lanes I mean anti-mage he's still uh going to work he's wasting a little bit of time oh, right now blink he's all right, it's just a Witch Doctor. The Chrono, it catches the real Anti-Mage. Do they have the damage to follow Frugos on the backside? He is going to get jumped on by Zabo, but he's trying to get the Hex, but it gets reflected. He's protected by a Ghost Scepter, actually. Ends up just burning down. Yuma commits his BKB as well. Not a good uh, not a good fight there. You didn't have a follow-up from anybody. Uh, yeah, committing that Chrono here is a little bit optimistic. Magnus couldn't follow up with an RP either. He was on the uh, in this fountain actually trying to tee for the shrine when that fight started. Titan Silver now picked up on uh, the face's void. But they need to be careful with these, uh, I'm more careful with these Chrono Spheres as the game goes on. Uh, it's a little bit quicker to move uh, around the map now. You can shove out lanes even faster. Now, if you misplay a Chrono Sphere, Anti Mage is going to be able to, to take a major objective, and that's exactly what they're doing here. I believe Roshan. they know about this Roche. But it's hard to say. Magnus sitting up on the high ground. They will. He just goes in. The RP, it gets mini stun. No, he ends up canceling the skewers available. Can they turn this around? They're able to take down one. The Tusky buys back immediately. A great soul bind on the backside. Sword, though, just getting beat to death by this DD faces void. Barely surviving, but he will time walk after him. He's back into the pit. He has buyback available. RP, the only cooldown really committed at the moment. Finger of Death and Death Ward still available. And Yuma grabs the Aegis. He gets the cheese and he gets. That Ag Shard, Papa Tutti going in aggressively, looking for Y once again. He's got him. Double kill for Yuma. Oh, his Elven Tunic, he lost it on the Anti-Mage. No, did he really? Yeah. Yuma does not care, here. man. He is in the base. He is looking for blood here. Frugos closing the gap, pops the Ghost Scepter preemptively. All right, you need to chill, Yuma. Get back. <laughs> Calm down. Hex on the bottom side does find the uh, Ember Spirit. All right, D2 Hustlers. They're feeling themselves. Yeah, they feel like they can do anything. They're unstoppable. Chronosphere, another 45 seconds, RP 70. A lot of this off the back of uh, Dai Lama's commitment into Roche. He doesn't RP right away either. It gives his team a little bit more time to react. He knows that the enemies aren't able to, to cancel it or go on top of him, blow him up fast enough. Ended up giving that so, Ag shard over to Papa Tutti, by the way. So he now has the extra Dissimulate Ring and extra damage. Top lane, they did see the Anti-Mage on a ward, but he has bailed. He's actually working on a uh, e blade. This is interesting. Yeah, an e blade rather than a butterfly. Butterfly feels a lot stronger after the nerf to divine rapier. Yeah, not no a lot of forms of true strike. Through. They didn't yeah, buff yeah. MKB as a result, though, right? So MKB yeah, got MKB a lot better. Sucks. Building MKB oh, yeah. is garbage. Uh, faces, faces yeah. It's like, do you see what faces voice building? This is interesting. As soon as you have this, uh, this E blade done, you're already gonna have uh, Kendra to the E blade. All right, nullifier a... on Faceless Void, pretty much whenever he wants it. Yeah. 
know, useless E Blade here uh, being worked on by the anti mage because he's got this ghost after he sees it. And that's going to counter uh, several items the Aeon Disc on the Ember Spear. It's going to counter, uh, I don't know, uh, Glimmer, Glimmer Cape, Cape Force Staff. Dual Scepter if uh, Lethrak chooses to build it. Force Staff, yeah. And there are no Force Staffs, but yeah, it's mainly, yeah, Glimmer Cape, Aeon Disc, uh, Ghost Scepter, yeah. It even gets rid yeah. of the Eternal Shroud. Is Eternal Shroud dispellable? Uh, probably. Probably. I've never actually tested that one. It's a good question. Can you dispel pipe? Uh, yes. All right, then it's probably dispellable. It fills me with nothingness. So many mechanics in this game, you know. They need to stop adding those. Very annoying when they do that. Yeah. Top lane tier two attack, tower. You can't attack wards outside uh, creep spawn boxes anymore. Yeah, only um, in creep spawn box, creep spawn boxes, which is really yeah, weird. That was like shadow patch, right? Yeah. It's uh, a weird change to, to add to the game. Somebody joined my chat uh, yesterday and pointed that out to me. They asked me how many hits it takes to, to break a war, and I'm like, yeah, let me show you. I said, wait, I said I was said six, and I was right. Uh, and then I said five afterwards, and it was wrong. I'm like, yeah, let me test it, and I just couldn't attack the war. They got me. <laughs> Anyways, anti-mage. Grabs the uh, enemy team outpost, needs another 600 gold to finish this E-Blade. He's not going to be very happy when he realizes his faceless void uh, has his nullifier complete. Not only does he have nullifier, but he has finally eclipsed the anti-mage in net worth. And Divai Lama has just Guardian Greave, Solar Crest. Now we're going to pipe. I mean, this is just Aura Bot Magnus, right? Like, this is what Magnus was uh, meant to be. Uh... I mean, if you hate yourself and love your teammates, yeah. This is true. I mean, there's a reason why Magnus received a 75% larger bonus with Empower. Ooh, Anti-Mage blinks forward aggressively, finds Frugos. He uses the Abyssal for this, and uh, Faces Void's coming back. I mean, you have to know there's a ward up there. All right, he's just looking for the mid lane. Oh, Uh, he doesn't have a remnant, but he does get protected for the moment. The BKB, it is protecting, but there's the, gonna be the RP instead. Uh, he didn't have a remnant out, Neff. He did not. That looked, uh, very questionable. He thinks he's invincible with that Aeon disc, but there's a nullifier here on the faces void, so he's slowed. He's not going anywhere. A lot of that was off the back of that, uh, Diffusal blade. On Diffusal the nullifier, void, thinking, right? Yeah, it just wasn't going anywhere. Yeah, Diffusal nullifier. Which doctor? Remnant time moving very quick. They're gonna TP bottom to punish Steel Borko for this one. Skura comes out, whip this boy into shape. And uh, they'll pick themselves up an easy kill there. Witch Doctor, not a fun hero to dive against Neff, especially when you have four staff, glimmer cape, and 20 holy locket charges. Uh, I like the holy locket attack. It, uh, the change to this patch, it uh, started recharging a little bit quicker. Yeah, passive charge regeneration time reduced from 15 to 10 seconds. Uh, you're going to have them outside fights a lot more often. Yeah, it's it's a pretty sick item. I really do like this. Also, just amping Voodoo Restoration so much. God forbid he ever hits level uh, 25 and has the Voodoo Restoration max. Uh... Oh my god. I mean, he's level 19. It's not unheard of. I'm surprised he's not going for the Voodoo Switcheroo. I'm a big fan of that one. It's like, uh... You're just like saying the word, Neff. Don't lie. Yeah, I like I like saying the word. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Valva. There's some good names. There's also some, some very bad names. I remember when uh, Crows of Haze used to be called Amp Damage and uh Oh, hold on one second, mid lane. Void Spirit caught out, pops the BKB, the Chrono from Yuma coming in to try and do what damage they can to the anti mage. He is out of mana. They pop the cheese, keep on popping 2D alive, and Ember Spirit just comes right in. And uh, Aeon's just gonna protect him for the moment. The Yules, though, he's gonna get hexed. He gets hexed. The perfect timing from Frugos, and that is not gonna be any escape. He buys back immediately. Three heroes dead on war. A fantastic fight here once again. <laughs> But now it feels like uh, the shoes on the other foot, the anti mage is getting blown up, and this uh, Ember Spirit doesn't deal enough damage. He's trying to go for a Daedalus to try and correct that, but his items, his Black King Bar uh, Aeon Death, not providing him too much. He's going Maelstrom Daedalus. It's opposite of uh, Maelstrom, or sorry, Battle Fury Daedalus, where you used to go on Ember Spirit, but you're not amping any of that magic AoE damage that you're doing. Yeah. 
You do have the Dissimilate stun now on the Voice Bird. He is level 25, which is a huge buff. You do pick up that 20% backtrack here on the Faceless Void. He's going to drop this Sigil in and try and slow this down as much as possible, but um, this is difficult. Anti-Mage, no buyback for 35 more seconds. RP is online. Jumping these heroes is going to be so difficult with where they're positioned. Dai Lama goes in, tries to go for the Skewer play. Not going to connect, but it is still just space for this... Uh, this melee barracks. It's gonna be the fortification. They jump on the backside. Snowball to give him some space. He has to pop the BKB. Sword falling incredibly low. He goes down, and so does Steel. They're gonna continue the chase. Why, why, why? Able to get out for the moment. But they get the barracks, and then they will just uh, go back to pushing bottom lane. I mean, maybe they're gonna try and force the buyback on the Shrak, but joke's on them. He doesn't have it. Yeah, uh, as soon as they figure this out, they're gonna happily take the second set of racks as well. Nobody's able to play that far forward to the enemy team right now. And Ember Spirit, you know, as tanky as uh, he wants to feel with his Black King bar and Aeon, just gets blown up incredibly quickly as well. All the fire and uh, everything else, great way to counter him. They're sustaining themselves as well here. This uh, Witch Dog with the Holy Lock you were talking about. Look at all this healing Yuma has. Oh, yeah. And they actually just dropped the gem in Yuma's pocket. Zabo pops the BKB, immediately bashed Aeon, just going to protect him for the moment. Finger of Death. I don't even know where that went. No, it wasn't. They're onto the Tusk, they get him, no problem, and a two-man Earth Spike from Frugos. This guy, like I said, Lion is his hero, and he is just styling on him this game. No 1-4-3-7, no problem, says Frugos. He's, yep. uh, GG comes out. First yeah. game, D1 Hustlers. I'm sorry, you know, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> They're gonna be the D1 Hustlers, right? Is that what we're getting at? Yeah, the D2 Hustlers, the D1 Hustlers, it's looking pretty good. Uh, first victory here in the NADPC. Uh, looking strong against Wind and Rain, rough for a little while, I gotta say, but uh, and they, eventually they, they just couldn't do enough damage to these heroes. There were some huge ultimates, I gotta say, uh, from Magnus. Uh, Divai Lama did an amazing job. The 200 IQ clip bait, uh, Faking out these RPs a number of times. I would say that he's the MVP of this match. That and moving around the map to make sure this face would always had him power. Uh, playing around that. Shout out to Divai Lama, my opinion. And MVP of this match. Everybody else played pretty well, but uh, we yeah. know who the real star player is. Oh, yeah. All right. I mean, I I'm with you on this one. Just the, the cliffing play alone was so, so dang funny, but also ended up being such a great uh, utility for them. He had amazing 29 kills. Um, just really giving Yuma and Papa Tutti a great game. I also love the rotations from both Pandego as well as Frugos. Like they were all over the map. They shut down Sword in the like the early mid game, right? And that top lane managed to find multiple kills on this Lashrac. And uh, you know, it, it really shows. I mean, Lashrac finishes the game four and ten. The supports zero, eleven, and two and thirteen. Like they were just constantly getting punished for their uh, 